Welcome in. You're tuned to another edition of Where the 99 Lead. It's a presentation of the University of Pikeville, brought to you by the University of Pikeville. We talk all things regarding the University of Pikeville, and we talk about a new semester, a new school year, and joined today by a special guest. Gary Justice, Director of Admissions, welcome back in. Hey, thanks. Always great to be here, Andrew. It is always great to talk about exciting things going on at the University of Pikeville, and we've had a lot to talk about over the last year or so. Also joined by Britta Gibson, Assistant Dean for Student Life. Yes, thanks for having me, Andrew. We're going to find out what that title means Absolutely. in just a little bit because I think we're going to have fun on this edition of Where the 99 Lead. Uh, Britta, before we do that, let's talk about your background how you arrived at the University of Pikeville, uh, how long you've been there, and uh, your role on campus. I'm actually from Pikeville, so I went to Pike Central High School and went to EKU and um, really enjoyed doing things outside of the classroom there. I mean, going to school and getting a degree was fun, sure. but I was involved in a sorority and um, helping freshmen transition there. So I went to the University of Tennessee and pursued a master's in college student personnel, which uh -huh. sounds like a made up degree, but um, they really do offer it. And it was really to kind of emphasize teaching students to transition. And we believe that 50% of what you learn, you learn outside of the classroom. Sure. So I spent a lot of time earning that degree, learning what services outside of the classroom do to prepare students. So once I graduated there, I went to Minnesota for a little while. And then Ron, da Ron Dameron called me back home and offered me a job here in 2007 and I've been with the University of Pikeville since then in a various doing various different things always um, I've always been the assistant dean they actually call me the dean of fun so I do a lot of the fun stuff that happens outside of the classroom and since I've been here I've developed um, two or three new programs to help our students in particular our freshman students transition from high school into college it's an important process and maybe Dean of Fun is taking it too lightly, but it is an important process because uh, I can recall when incoming freshmen were thrown into a college setting and said, here you go, you're registered, financial aid's taken care of, uh, you go to the bookstore, get your books, and classes begin on Wednesday. And that was basically how you were transitioned. It's been a long time back. Before we get into the Dean of Fun, and what your role is as a, a, a so assistant dean for student life. Let's talk about uh, your background. You're from here. I am. Went to Pike Central. You came back to the University of Pikeville. Then it was Pikeville College in 2007. How have things changed on campus since you arrived in 2007? You know, it's really a completely different place. I came in and I, I want to say this too, coming in it was a different place than anywhere I had been before because we offer that personal touch that I've not seen at any of the schools that I've been at. And so we've kept that since 2007, but we've grown. A lot of the programs that I work with mirror something that you would see at a mid to large size university. Sure. So you may not see these programs at a smaller school that um, we would be benchmarked with. But we, we keep growing. I think um, the students get to be more excited. When I first came here, you would see students wearing sweatshirts for other schools, and now you right. see a lot of orange and black on the campus. And um, you see a lot of students getting involved. We've offered Greek life and some other things that have just really changed the whole atmosphere. And so I think um, even from a staff perspective, people are just really excited to be there right now. Where the 99 lead, we talk about the historic 99 steps that lead to the University of Pikeville campus. They also lead back to the community, back into the world post-graduation. But I've got to tell you from the Pikeville, Pike County, Eastern Kentucky community that sits at the bottom of those 99 steps and beyond, there's been a lot more orange and black out in the communities as well. The excitement has overflowed if you will, from the hill at the University of Pikeville. It's, it's overtaken the community, the county, and the region with the excitement around the University of Pikeville. Gary Justice, classes begin August 20th, the start of another school year, uh, the start of uh, another part of life for incoming freshmen. How does the University of Pikeville help those incoming freshmen transition to college life? 
Well, the first day of class is always a very exciting time. You see students coming back. We usually have alumni members that are handing out schedules along with donuts and juice. A lot of people are welcoming the students there. But how does University of Pikeville help the student transition from high school to college? It goes all the way back to the recruiting stages of the student. Uh, the admissions team, we bring them on campus, introduce them to as many people as we can, to Britta, to financial aid, to a coach, to a professor, just try to get them in tune with everything. But, you know, once that transition happens, it's a different schedule. Uh, you know, they're used to the high school schedule, showing them a class at school at 8, going home at 3, lunch at a certain time. Well, everybody has a different schedule when you sure. get in college. So, which is what Britta's going to be talking a little bit later about the SOAR program. I know you and I have talked about that a little bit in the past. But really is where that recruiting stage kind of ends because we're, we're handing them over to Britta, who gets them with the professors, who gets them with their SOAR leaders, and they really start to bond to find how they're going to do that student life as well. Gary Justice, the Director of Admissions. Britta Gibson, Assistant Dean for Student Life, the Dean of Fun, as she's known on the University of Pikeville campus. And uh, Britta, I know Gary and I have talked about the SOAR program and that's one of your babies uh, student orientation and registration it goes on all summer that's one of the first steps in transitioning students to the university of pikeville freshmen but not just freshmen transfer students as well talk a little about this soar program uh, this year's soar program wrapped up Whew, catch your breath <laughs> right. right yes but talk about this year's program how was it received and maybe some changes that took place and some things maybe in the future um, the SOAR program is probably the, my favorite part of my job. I love meeting students, the incoming freshmen transfers, and parents. This is a transition for them as well, sure. and so this is where we really start to help all of those involved make that transition. We ran seven sessions, and those are two-day sessions. The students come in at about one or two on day one. We um, do funny skits with them. Um, we have a a version of the Call Me Maybe video that Governor Patton was in that we show the students just to kind of let them know this is the environment that you're coming into. Whose idea was the Call Me video? That came out of the Dean of Fun's office. <laughs> I um, was going to say, that, I, I had a feeling it did. I, I hire a great group of students who run that SOAR program and they saw the other schools doing it and they decided they wanted to do it so we set aside two days to kind of come up with the plan and tackle it. And it was great to watch the SOAR leaders bond because a lot of these students, they hadn't worked together yet and working together in that stressful situation, um, this was a very good icebreaker for them. And so we, you know, we put that on and we showed it to the parents and the students when they came in and that just kind of lightens the mood. Sure. These students come in, some are on the verge of tears, some don't want to get out of the car yeah. and we try to do what we can to make that a super fun, um, heartfelt, and warm environment and then we get to the substance of it really on day two those students leave there with their ID card they leave there with the schedule right. they've talked to financial aid um, they spend the night on campus so they get to know what it's like to live on campus um, we'll do bonfires with them um, I hired an intern who is in the a master's program at another school and she came in and ran those evening programs with them we just have a really good time sure. Um, while that's going on, we kind of separate them from the parents and guests a little bit and we, we talk to them and we let them know um, about the services we offer for the parents right. and um, kind of get them transitioned. And then we do something unique. I think um, we let the parents sit in on the advising session with the students, which is something that I've not seen done at another school because we know we have a lot of first generation college students and their parents may not know what that advising session is like and we want the buy-in from the parents and so we let them have that moment with the advisor when when that student is getting what really is that's what they're there for the the other stuff they appreciate it they sure. love it they give us good reviews but they're there to leave with the schedule absolutely and for the parents to get to have that experience as well has been um, phenomenal we're going to talk more about the parents and a parent program mm -hmm. that you started but We've talked about this video on several editions of Where the 99 Lead, and I know Governor Patton, the president of the University of Pikeville, is featured in this video, uh, but our own director of admissions at the University of Pikeville, Gary Justice, is also a part of that <coughs> video. And I think maybe part of a future show is we should show a clip of, of the SOAR video, Call Me, and maybe it's part of an addition to a future edition of Where the 99 Lead. Our listeners would appreciate it, and I think they need to know. 
the things that go on in the SOAR program. And you can, you can expect something like that to happen again next year sure. as well. Very, very good. Uh, Britta Gibson, uh, Assistant Dean for Student Life, known on campus as the Dean of Fun. Uh, I've got a feeling students just absolutely love you, but I've got a feeling parents might be pretty fond of you as well. You started the UPIC Parent Program. I did. Uh, it's an or organization you're very passionate about. Um, of course, the UPIC Parent Program and uh, what does the university do? to help parents transition as well. I was a college student, but I've also been a college student parent and very different roles. Uh, as a parent, it's a tough transition for a college student entering school. The UPIC Parent Program, what does it do to help in that transition? That's a great question, Andrew. I know for me, when I went away to college as a first generation college student, my parents were, were involved, but they may not have known um, how to best use their energy to support me. Sure. And so th they were great parents and um, I'm very proud of them. And so I use that experience to kind of create this UPIC parent program. When, when parents come to SOAR, we, we hook them up with some swag, we give them a nice UPIC parent bag, and we let them sign up for um, a mailing list. Right. And so twice a month we email the parents what's going on on campus. Sure. So for example, if it's midterm, we'll give them tips as to how to help your student. You know, your student may come call home and they're stressed about this. Well, this is what's really going on. You know, they're studying for their midterms. And so they're getting um, little tidbits. We don't want to overwhelm them, but they're getting that connection with us that lets them know right. what's going on. They can also email us parent at upike.edu if they have questions or concerns and they don't know who to contact. So they have that that 24 hour you know kind of hotline that they know if I have a question and I may be too intimidated to ask or I don't know where to go sure. those emails come to me and I can source that if it's a financial aid question I can send that on to that department or work with a parent that way. We also do care packages so sometimes it's hard for a parent to know that their son or daughter is going to be away on their birthday or maybe they know um, they're going through a hard time, they've, they've received a, their first C on a test or something like that. Right. They can contact our office and we try to personalize those. If it's a soccer player, we try to, to put some soccer ball toys or something like that in there and then we will del hand deliver the package. We take pictures, email that back to mom and dad so they know where their money went and they get to see that expression on their, on their student's face. And I actually sang happy birthday and delivered one this morning to one of our students who's who's here for her birthday and so they've got those connections um, and opportunities to be able to um, show they how they care for their their student and show a little bit of love and then we use all that money then to any extra from the care packages to fund the swag for the UPOC parent Very program. Good. Liaison between parents, the university, the student, uh, the parents can still fill in touch but it also acts as maybe that first cut of the umbilical cord from a student's perspective. Mom and dad, they want to help, but I've got to break loose too. Uh, I've got to come out of the nest at some point. Sounds like a great program and something we want to talk more about in, in the future. Uh, Gary Justice, Director of Admissions at the University of Pikeville. Classes start August 20th. It's just around the corner. Uh, incoming students, what's the number, what number do we expect to have on campus uh, this fall and what will students experience moving into the residence halls? Well, we've got a couple of different numbers I want to throw out to you, Andrew. As far as total enrollment, we're going to be close to 1,300 full-time students on campus, so the campus is going to be full. Um, it's going to be uh, live, um, but when I say full, I do not want to intimidate anybody, like right. there's not room for me. It's just the fact is the more students have, the more programs you have, so the more opportunities will be brought to the students. In the residence hall, we're going to have about 850 residential students. Wow. So this, the brand new cafeteria that is now open and serving some great food, Andrew, believe me. I'm waiting it, for my invitation. <coughs> sir, let this serve as your invitation, Andrew. Okay. Anytime you want to come up, all we'll right. be glad to feed you. But now we have the room to feed all the students at one time. I mean, of course, we're not 850 students, but in... The cafeteria is going to be open up extended hours where those students can come in and uh, dine at their leisure. But also some other things we've got going on is a welcome week. I know Britt's going to talk about it a little bit later. Uh, it's an opportunity during that welcome week to get those students out of the dorm rooms, 
Now, one of the worst things that a student can do is when they get off to college, maybe it's the first time away from home, especially a freshman, is stay pinned up in their dorm room right. and not experience campus. Um, you know, the classroom is the main part of college, uh, but Britta quoted a, a statistic earlier, 50% of what you learn is outside the classroom. And so, you know, socialize with some other students, um, get to know your professors a little bit more. So that's one of those things about coming up is that Welcome Week is a very exciting time. Move in for University of Pikeville incoming students, you say uh, 800 plus? 850 students. Let's step back. How long have you been back at the University of Pikeville? This makes my third year. How many students were living on campus then? When Governor Patton took over as president, we had 650 students totally enrolled at, the, yes. at then Pikeville College. And you've got 850 living Live in residence campus. halls. So this year, Andrew, we've opened up three new dormitories Yes, for students. Move-in day is a little bigger deal now than it was then. It's, uh, we actually had to section it off the past two years. For example, this past, uh, August 3rd and 4th, we had the football team and men's and women's soccer team move in. Yes. Um, and then the volleyball team will move in. You're going to be having uh, the different sports teams move in at different times. And then we have the general move in, maybe for the students who are not participating in the athletics or their sport is during the spring. It has gotten that big where we've actually had to section it off. And it's not the fact of us trying to. Um, it just try to make a smoother transition for sure. the student. If you have 850 people show up at the same time, it's going to be a tough move in. But also, we offer assistance. We have people there, uh, st other students helping people move things in, carry boxes up. The community gets involved. A lot of church groups in the past come help carry boxes in. Uh, maybe talk to the parents because, like you talking about the umbilical cord and uh, transition and just tough times. Let's try to make that transition as smooth as possible. I would imagine it's all hands on deck on campus as well with the, the staff, faculty, administration at the university. Uh, of course, for move-in day, it's, uh, it's a great time. It's an exciting time. Talking with Gary Justice, Director of Admissions at the University of Pikeville, and Britta Gibson, uh, of course, the ass Assistant Dean for Student Life at the university. Gary, you mentioned Welcome Week, and it's another one of Britta's programs, the Dean of Fun. I, I hear Welcome Week. And I can just envision uh, dozens of tremendous activities going on, helping students make the transition. Let's talk about some of the events that take place during Welcome Week. Um, the Student Services Office, we work really hard together to put on a full week of activities. That Sunday, we run a 737 worship service, and we do that um, so that the parents who are moving students in can participate in that if they want to see that. So that kind of kicks off Welcome Week. Monday night we have a very interesting event. It's called Hypnotic Intoxication. We're going to get some students drunk on stage um, with hypnosis. Wow. And uh, so we'll have about 20 or so students who will go um, through this process and they're going to go to a party that night in front of, uh, in front of their peers. And we've actually hosted, um, his name is Keith Carcutt, we've hosted him on, him on campus before and had about 400 students show up. He hypnotized me twice when I was at Eastern, so he's been doing this um, for a little while, not to show my age. And so he's wow. going to do that, and um, hopefully the students will get a good laugh at each other, but then learn some things about being safe when you make choices in college. Sure. Tuesday, we have what we're going to call the Great American Street Fair, and we've been doing this. We'll close off a, a part of campus, and folks from the community are invited to host a table and come meet our students. And we'll have everything from face painting to balloons to, to popcorn and cornhole and that sort of thing. And students will just come out um, of the residence hall rooms. We hope the commuter students stick around for this. And we just kind of walk around kind of like you would at a boardwalk, that sort of thing. But a great opportunity for the community to come and hang out with us on that night for free fun and food. The following night, we do an event um, through the Student Success Office called What's Up Wednesday, and they will be hosting a cornhole tournament and a bonfire. And it's, it's kind of crazy, but a lot of times these students will come here and they've never roasted a marshmallow or been sure. to a bonfire. So even that is um, a learning experience. Thursday, um, the students will have an opportunity to meet the Greeks when our fraternities and sororities will host an open house. And then our students with their student ID can go to the Riverfield 10 and watch a free movie that night on us. Wow. 
Friday night we're going to have some live music in our courtyard and then Saturday we're having paintball mania at the YMCA where our students can go up there and show their ID and play paintball for free. So a really full week of events. Um, students will have a lot of things to get involved in. We want them out of their rooms. Sure. Um, you know, I tell, going back to UPAC parent, I tell parents if they're calling you all the time, they're not out, you know, doing things right. and getting to meet new people. And so um, that's, we really hope we hit them hard up front where they get to see all these fun things that they can do. And a lot of these things we'll do throughout the school year as well. Talking with Bretta Gibson, the Assistant Dean for Student Life at the University of Pikeville, and Gary Justice, the Director of Admissions. Uh, Welcome Week sounds like a great time. A lot of fun, Andrew. A As lot part of, of fun. the community, how can we participate? Well, the first thing you want to do is contact Britta, 606-218-5226, um, I believe is Britta's number. If they want to get involved, I know she has several businesses already coming up to set some tables. It's also a good time to promote if you need some part-time employment help. Sure. Uh, I know some people in the past come up and had some applications. When you start thinking you have 850 potential employees there just to, to find some help, it's a great place to come to, but also it's a good way just to get involved, um, just kind of see what the University of Pikeville has done for the community, but also to let these people, let these kids know that if you need anything from us, the community is there for them as well. Another transitional program the University of offers is a freshman studies class. It's required for all incoming freshmen. Can you tell us the purpose of the program, what it involves, and uh, what they might uh, experience? Well, Andrew, you know, coming out of my own college experience, I remember going going to Eastern and I didn't know what a syllabus was. Sure. I didn't know that the classroom that the professor was in was not his office. Right. And these sound, you know, like kind of silly things. I didn't know that you go to class even if it's raining. Yeah. And so first year studies is set up to kind of help students transition. It's an eight week class. It's graded. So students will leave there with a credit hour for that and it's taught by a variety of our faculty and staff. I teach a couple of sections of it myself. And the students will come in, they're gonna learn about time management, they're gonna learn about diversity, homesickness, making healthy decisions. So some of the things that they may know a little bit about, but we're gonna make it real. We're gonna talk about it in, in the current setting that it's in. You know, those welcome week activities, we do that. Um, knowing that in first year studies our students have to go to four campus activities and write about those so students potentially can come to welcome week and take care of a homework assignment too sure. um, they're also going to be reading a book it's called gap creek by robert morgan they're going to read that book and then robert will be on campus in october to talk to the students um, that was an oprah's book club choice and um, so the students, when they came through SOAR, they were given the book. Some of them, hopefully, have been reading those. Right. And then when he gets on campus, they'll be able to get their book signed, ask him questions, um, that sort of thing. The, it is a real class. It has a midterm. It has a final exam. Um, and, and we cover a lot of different topics that really just get them comfortable with, with the university. And hopefully, based on the instructors that we select to teach that, they have a mentor coming out of that. I know for me, several of the students that I've had in that class, they'll then come back to me like the parents do through UPOC Parent. They'll come back one, two, three years into it needing help with the FAFSA or wanting to know about finding a part-time job. And they make that connection with somebody on campus that can then kind of keep an eye on them and guide them through the rest of the way. Sounds like a tremendous program and a tremendous class. Uh, fe freshman studies and it's required for freshmen. Is it required for transfers? Yeah, we require it for any student who brings in 15 or less hours, okay. and that doesn't include dual credit. So we want those to be 15 hours that they've spent on, you know, on a college campus in a traditional sense. Um, transfer students can take it if they want to. A lot of those students will have already completed that at the school that they came sure. from. And so it really goes based on, on hours. And we offer, you know, based on the enrollment, we offer 20 plus sections of that in the fall. Very good. Uh, the book that they're required to read for the class, mm -hmm. Robert Morgan, and the title? Gap Creek. Let's not do a cliff notes, but uh, what's the book about? It's, it's about, um, it's, it's a history piece, so it's set at the turn of the century, and it talks about um, a woman's marriage. 
and and she's from um, South Carolina, I believe. And we try to always choose an Appalachian book, right. and it it chronicles her first year of marriage, which is strikingly similar to what a first year on a college campus would be like. Some of the things that she goes through in the book, I'm going to be able to relate that to homesickness or making smart decisions in the class. So it'll be it'll be interesting to see how the students do with that. A lot of sections with that class, the SOAR sessions, I think you said there were seven, mm -hmm. 70 students there about in each, nearly 500 new students this semester. We're ready to see a lot of new faces on campus this fall. Wow, it's going to be an exciting time. Welcome week, we want to uh, check in with that uh, again in just a little bit with some dates and how the community can be involved. Uh, you're tuned to Where the 99 Lead, where we talk about the University of Pikeville. It's brought to you by the University of Pikeville, and classes begin August 20th. Joined by Breda Gibson, the Assistant Dr Dean of Student Life, the Dean of Fun. If you're tuned in and uh, you're a part of the University of Pikeville community, you already knew that and Gary Justice, the Director of Admissions. Uh, Gary, uh, we're in the final days prior to classes beginning August 20th. Uh, extension campuses are out there. Uh, open registration is upcoming. If someone's tuned in at this late date and they've decided, I want to attend the University of Pikeville, they still can. What's their first steps? Where should they go? Where should they call? And what should they bring? Well, first thing, Andrew, they need to call the Office of Admissions and 606-218-5251. That's a good way if we can check in the computer system, see if the student's already applied. If not, we can, this, the process is simple. It's an application and transcripts. We need high school transcripts and if we need any college whatsoever, we need those college transcripts as well on the admission side. On the financial aid side, just make sure they fill out the FAFSA and the U Pike school code is 001980. If the student has done that, that's the only thing we need. And then we can get them set up for open registration and we can get them into class. Get their hands on transcripts. The application can be done online. The FAFSA, of course, done online. So uh, they can take care of those items in the matter of a couple of hours in an evening and the next day be on campus completing those things. Uh, scholarships still available? Scholarships are still available too. Let me back up too on the transcripts. If they can have their school at least fax us the transcripts, so maybe it's a situation where they can't get the campus to hand deliver those transcripts yet. They can fax those in, at least we'll get the process started and hopefully completed, and once they arrive on campus, they can hand deliver those transcripts. Um, so we, we make it as easy as possible for the student. But to answer your question, yes, scholarships are still available for students. So it's certainly very doable, even for the fall semester 2012. Uh, Gary Justice, the Director of Admissions at the University of Pikeville, it is always a great time to be a bear. Classes begin August 20th. Dates for open registration at the Extension campuses. That's going to be August 13th and 14th. Yes. Also, there's an orientation on our main campus on August the 18th. So if a student cannot attend the 13th or the 14th, then they can always come to our main campus on the 18th starting at 10 a.m. Classes begin August 20th August for another 20th. school year. That, that is, and that's the Extension campuses. Now, as far as main campuses, open registration is August 16th and the 17th, and that will be in Booth Auditorium in the Record Memorial Building. They can still attend the University of Pikeville this fall. Uh, Britta Gibson, Assistant Dean to students at the University of Pikeville, you are the Dean of Fun. I can see it. Mm -hmm. I can tell just by some of the things we've talked about. Welcome week upcoming, and as students arrive on campus, let's talk about the dates and how some members of the community could be involved. Sure, we're going to be doing programming August 19th through the 25th and mostly in the evening because they are in classes during the day and we, we, we want to put that first. Sure. So, you know, we've got the hypnotist coming in on Monday, the street fair on Tuesday, which is the biggest way for the community to get involved. Just contact me at 218-5226 to reserve a table. It's free to participate. Wednesday, we've got the cornhole tournament and the bonfire. Thursday, meet the Greeks and the free movie night. Friday, we're going to have live music up in our courtyard, and Saturday, paintball at the YMCA. There you go. Britta Gibson, the Assistant Dean of Students at the University of Pikeville. Thanks for being here today. Great stuff. Thanks for having me, Andrew. Dean of Fun. Gary Justice, Director of Admissions. Uh, you're kind of fun yourself. Uh, they may not call you the Dean of Fun, but Director of Admissions. 
and I know you're looking forward to another school year. It's been great having you here. Thanks for having me, Andrew. You've been tuned to another edition of Where the 99 Lead, brought to you by the University of Pikeville. Your time, your university, you Pike.